Okay, let me see here. Today is, what is this episode? Come on. 86. What's the date today? September 3rd, 2020. I've done. 86 live streams. My goodness. Okay. Hey everybody, how you doing today? My name is Michael Markowski and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how to draw today. I'll turn the monitor so you can see the full studio in all its glory. Um, so today what I want to do is I want to show you how to draw quickly and efficiently, how to capture as much of a scene uh, in the shortest amount of time. And the more and more we do that, the more confident we're going to become with our drawing ability. Now, before I get started, I'm just going to show you a few different materials that we could use that or well that I'm going to use if you have them laying around the house you're welcome to go grab them uh, if you don't have them don't worry I'm going to try to do as much as possible with just a regular pencil and then kind of give you an idea what these materials will look like so that if you want to go buy them you've kind of seen a little bit about how it works so um, in my little bag of tricks here Oh, I need, uh, oh, I need to do, um, oh, let's move this, blah, 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 okay. So, if, here's my uh, box of tricks here, a few different things, and I, I think we've, we did a few drawings, I think, with charcoal sticks in the past, now that I think about it. Um, so this is willow charcoal. I think this box is, I think this, oh, it's 650. I got this at Rath Art Supplies here in Vancouver, a local, um, shop on Main Street. So the, inside that, as you're going to see, is inside this box is, 
Is it gonna focus on my hand at all? No? Uh, come on, camera. Ah, it's having a hard time. Um, but anyway, it's they come in little sticks like this. Um, and then, if you want, there's some larger compressed charcoal. So these are larger sticks that are kind of like this, right? And you can see, I could get messy. I think maybe I'm just going to try temporarily focusing on that. Okay, so it's not zooming in and out. Pencils. Oh, you can see here's some more. I tend to... This stuff is messy, so I, here I've got a... This is good. I don't have to open up a new box of uh, charcoal. Um, so this is my box. Okay, so here you can see a really... Th well, you can't see because it's so dark. A really large, thick uh, piece of stick. And then here's... It's so dark you can't see. Okay. So, and here's a larger... This that's, that's what's the main thing that's in these boxes, is this kind of uh, charcoal. So, a number of different options. So if you have those kicking around and you, you've you wanted to try them, um, then today is the day. If you don't, don't worry. Um, I'm still going to be able to do everything we normally do. Um, but it's just sort of nice to know that there are different tools that artists have uh, for different kinds of uses. So there's some charcoal um, and then there's some spray fixative and stuff that I've got a whole bunch of, I'll show you them all, workable fixative, different companies, all this different, all, of course all of them are like uh, half used <laughs> because um, over the years, you know, you're, I'm out somewhere and I've got something I've been drawing and I don't want to wait till I get home to spray it because you don't want it to smudge, but we'll get to all that. Okay, so let's, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a few different ways that I've uh, learned to draw quickly and different kinds of styles that can help you draw quickly. Now, in the thumbnail to this image, at least right now, I might actually change it after this, but um, you can see what uh, I used kind of that action, line of action and uh, rhythm lines, things that we talked about way back, I think in like episode 12 or something of um, how to draw figures, like drawing the internal structure and kind of build, building around the skeleton. We've also talked about doing the block-in method and drawing kind of like the... Um, I would have to be going back to a really... Maybe I think I have... Do I have it in one of these old sketchbooks? Or is that going too far back? Instead of just blabbing on, I should just actually show you. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, so here's what we were talking about, the line of action, right? And drawing figures quickly like this. And we were looking at some images that I found online and we were trying to draw them inside. We did the thinker, if you recall. And then we did the female body. And then I showed you the block-in method Right, so drawing kind of this outline and then drawing inside, all right? And, and all the different kinds of ways that you could do that. So that's sort of what's in the thumbnail. And if you can draw really quickly using those techniques, and that's, I think, maybe the optimal strategy, but not everybody wants to draw that way or can draw that way. So we're gonna kind of play around with a few different kinds of techniques. Um, I also, to do this, what I want to show you is one of my favorite strategies using video. Our daughter up there. Oh, this is gonna, oh, I'm just 
got back from a walk. Little girl. Okay, where's my mouse? Okay. So, on the screen there, uh, this is a website for images, books, and video that is in the public domain. And public domain means that its copyright has long expired, or maybe recently expired. I think it's in North America 75 years after publication or after the artist die it's changes all the time and there I know there was a, a, a whole recent kerfluffle about this um, but one of my favorite movies of all time is this movie called the cabinet of dr. Caligari 1920 um, and it um, Robert Robert Wien, Wien, probably, because this is a German film, German Expressionist film. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to play part of the movie. And then we're going to pause it. And while it's paused, we're going to try to do a drawing of what we see on screen here. What that crazy... Uh, old man there, the Dr. Caligari. Oh, uh, here's the somnambulist. Hmm. So the, this movie is famous because of these like wild set designs. Everything is there's pretty much no right angles. Everything is kind of built very strangely uh, because it's a story about a a uh, sleepwalker who goes around and murders people during his sleep. Uh, so it's a kind of, it's an early silent horror film here. I just gotta make it bigger here. So the, the reason why I'm using this as a, um, as a source of study is not only because it's um, in the public domain and I can use it here without getting sued by anybody, but I also think it's just a really beautiful um, film. It certainly inspired me when I was much younger for, because uh, I, I made some films when I, was, when I was young. So I'm just looking here to find a suitable image. Something. Ooh. Um, oh. oh, there we go. Okay. So, what we're going to do is let's go. Back to our sketchbook. And I'm going to draw some squares on here uh, or kind of rectangular shapes. So let's do, let's see if I can fit maybe three rectangles on here. And they don't have to be perfect. So I'm going to draw one here. here and one here I did uh, years and years ago I, I was doing a art exchange or a school exchange and I was in, when I was in art school and I visited and I was living in New York and while I was there I went and visited a good friend of mine who was also on exchange at the uh, I think it's the museum school in Boston and I wasn't old enough to drink alcohol in the United States, so we couldn't really go out much. So I spent a lot of time sitting on his couch um, watching movies and just trying to come up. And it was snowing and it wasn't really lovely. So I spent a lot of time on his couch just drawing. And one of the things I started doing was drawing from the television. I think I may have mentioned this thing that I was doing in the past. But uh, anyway, so... Centered. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the image that's on the screen and I'm going to give myself uh, five minutes to make this drawing and then after five minutes no matter what I'm gonna stop and we're gonna find another image to draw okay so here's five minutes I'm going to switch the view I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here so because these boxes are a little bit smaller so what I would do if I was going to try to draw this really quickly, and this is this is part of our warm up, so don't worry about making it perfect, right? Here's this guy in the middle of the picture, right? You see, he's by putting his shoulders above, like rather than his neck down here and his shoulders here, it now kind of makes him look like he's kind of crouched, maybe a little bit um, suspicious, or you know, he's hiding something. All right, so. You can see that I'm just trying to get as much information on here as quickly as possible. I could be using my, my orange pencil right to, for my first layer of drawing. Maybe I'll do that next time, but. So part of this is, especially with an old movie like this, there's very little detail that we have, right? There's, um, it's, and I've enlarged it, so it's a little bit pixelated. So this is going to force us to have to make some decisions and concessions to kind of go quickly, right? So I feel like, okay, so you can see here, I'll even just keep clock down there okay so with the remaining time what I'm just gonna do is quickly fill in just darken this image and so I'm not really worried about uh, how accurate it is at the what I'm just want to do, especially since this is still our warm up, is just I'm, I want to get myself drawing as quickly as possible. So I'm kind of going in. Some of these areas in behind are a little bit darker. Okay, two minutes left. I'm just going to move that out of the way so that I can get at a little this a little bit more. Okay. Just going to shade a little bit of his face. So don't worry about making a real pretty drawing right now or really for at all today. Today's a day of, um, it is of exploration and experimentation. We've already spent some time doing some pretty labor intensive, hard to do kind of, we're lear we've learned a lot of the basic techniques and really for the next few classes the last few classes we're going to just implement this stuff and like how can we take what we've learned and use it for practical purposes and so some of you might be like well how how often am i going to be drawing things from a television how practical is that well it's it's not that i want you to come away with this amazing ability to draw paused television screens it's a it's about being able to draw things quickly you know so that you're not laboring over the details or constantly erasing and trying to make things perfect I want to show you a few different ways that we can just move quickly through drawings so I got another 30 seconds on the board I wonder there's probably a few of you who may have finished before me 
and maybe there's a few of you who are much further behind. I mean, again, this is our warm up, so I wouldn't be too concerned either way. Okay, I got 10 seconds left on the clock. You know, if I want, I could do a little bit of this, some stuff in the background here. Okay. There's another, t um, that was five minutes. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I think let's put this back here. I want the other view of, there we go. Okay. So let's continue. Let's find <laughs> something else here. Um, oh, I think, is this the famous series? This is the Somnambulist, the Dream Walker, carrying the bride. I think. That would be, maybe that's a little bit too complicated, something with too much background, so. Um, or, well, you know what, let's, how about we come back. He comes and he, oh, actually. Oh, well, let's try this. So, I'm gonna stick with my colored pencils here. And again, five minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go with my orange here just so you can see kind of my original. I'm looking for like the big dramatic lines in here. All right, so I just wanna be able to get as much information on the page quickly as possible. Okay, and then we've got this kind of stick figure, it's silhouetted. <laughs> okay. windows and who knows what on earth is, is going on in this image um, so this these all of these kind of weird right angles this is a, um, a, a part of a German style of filmmaking German expressionism which um, was also expressionist painting was was also a thing um, who were some of them? Max Ernst would have been the, probably the most famous of all of them. Um, who else? Who was another expressionist painter? Sometimes people would say Van Gogh was an expressionist, or but probably more post-impressionist painter. Um, a lot of this kind of style of art was popular. Uh, right before World War One was kind of the, the the birth of kind of expressionism, and continued afterwards, because a lot of those artists who a lot of artists were drafted into World War One, thinking it was going to be a, a a blast, and they were all going to have fun and you know go on these great adventures and you know, get to see different places on the planet, and they quickly found that the experiences in the trenches were far from um, what they imagined, and, and pretty horrific. So part of Expressionism was, like, how do you, how do you convey that incredible sense of, like, horror that those guys would have experienced um, in the trenches. Like just making, taking a photograph, which was still fairly primitive at the time, or making a painting just didn't quite cut it. 
How do you how do you convey feeling in an artwork? Like what it feels like to um, to be terrified, right? Or um, to uh, the smells and the kind of just that horror, that horrific experience. And so I got a minute and a half here. So rather than trying to paint what they saw, they tried to paint more what they felt and they would use very dramatic um, uh, compositions, angular imagery, kind of like, like in the, in the uh, film, using uh, bright colors that aren't blended together, but just sort of quickly layered on top of, of each other. Okay, 50 seconds. Okay. Um, I'll let you finish your drawing off here. One more here, 15 seconds. We're gonna, I think, speed it up a little bit on the next image. So I'm gonna quickly flip through here. One second. Okay. So. With the final image on the page here, we're gonna, let's say we're gonna go down to four minutes. Okay. So here's this face. And it's also helpful drawing small like this. That's another reason why we're, we're doing this rather than using a full page. I'm gonna use a full page shortly here. But, you know, if we're doing something kind of small, doing it in four minutes is kind of manageable All right so i'm just quickly putting in the the face here the kind of the structure we've learned before All right, he's got this kind of moppy head of hair on the top i probably could have you given it a little bit more uh, room but that's not the purpose right okay um if you were a student of mine in one of my university classes, we would start going faster and faster and faster, and we would be trying to do these, you know, the first one maybe five minutes, the next one four minutes, the next one three minutes, and so on until we're doing these in like 20, 30 seconds or so, right? So it's, it's also the, this very theatrical makeup, right, that, that uh, this actor is wearing. Um, that, uh, you know, back in the day when cinema was still in its infancy, you had to wear, you know, really, you know, like paint your face white and wear like dark black outliner and so that your face would cl clearly show up on camera. Okay. So if you've ever seen photos on the like from of Charlie Chaplin on the set of his silent films, you know they it, next to people that aren't in makeup, like the director or you know screenwriter, all those kind of people kind of standing around watching, it looks pretty funny. Like they he looks like a circus clown. I mean, it, obviously Chaplin's whole character. The tramp was a kind of clown, 
Um, but uh, um, the, anyone who was, you know, was if you're playing a cowboy or a doctor, everyone you had to wear really intense makeup like that in order to, for their faces to clearly show up on the screen. Okay. I've got 47 seconds left on the clock here. Let's get a little shadow here. Okay. And so if anybody wanted to write down, these are stills from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Okay, six seconds. Okay. So, um, that's that should be pretty satisfying to be able to to crank out a bunch of drawings really quickly. Where's my view here? I need to move this up here. Move this here. So you know that that took us 15 minutes or so for three quick drawings. This still this would be a, a great way to warm up and. You don't have to, I'm using a copyright free video here because it's going up on the web, but you know, if you were at home, you could just be something Top Chef, which I was just watching last night, Top Chef Canada, um, uh, or, you know, whatever movie, Frozen 2, or, you know, it, it could be this video. You could be, you could pause it right now and do a, an image of me, right? It could be something you've t you've shot a video on your phone and you just pause it for a short period of time. I think a big part of this though is having a timer or just some awareness of how much time so that you're not obsessively trying to make it perfect. Obviously you could draw really, you could make a gigantic painting with a lot of detail, but that's not really the purpose of this activity. Um... looking at the comments here uh, looks like the audio is okay okay good so let's um let's go to another page here and this next video is you may be familiar with this the trip to the moon uh, by uh, Georges Méliès, who was, what was that? Is it Scorsese film that was recent? Oh, gosh, it just escapes me the name of it. It was sort of about this guy and kind of behind the scenes of, of the making of this film. Anyway, I mean, you're, you're, you'll see a few images here that are surely very recognizable because it's about this... These people that go on a trip to the moon, they get in this rocket. Everyone's all excited and they climb into the rocket and where is it? it's, a, it's like a giant, here's this gigantic cannon and the gigantic cannon is going to shoot them off to the moon. And here's the moon happily sleeping away and then here we're slowly zooming into the moon and boom here's the capsule crashes into the moon so let's draw this image uh, since it's such a famous image now if you want you could draw three little um, you could do the same thing, draw th three images here. I'm going to do this, but I'm gonna do it much larger and on a, on a, and I'm gonna use some charcoal. So you've kind of seen what I've done already. 
Um, I'm just going to use the charcoal and do a, a big drawing here just so you can see the possibilities of this. Um, and let me see, where's... this fit okay so here's my sketchbook there's the video on the side there I'm going to put four minutes onto the clock for this drawing and let's begin okay so I, you know, I could use a pencil and kind of outline everything, but I'm just going to go right into uh, the, with the willow charcoal stick here. Okay. So then I'm going to draw the outline of this moon. Let's put the this can this rocket ship or bullet or however you want to think about it all right so here's there's one eye here's another eye here's a nose here's this mouth all right i think that's the main things what's great about the charcoal stick is I can do a little bit of blending and kind of any place where there's so-called mistakes, I'll be able to kind of smudge it out. Okay. So. I've got, uh, one thing that's kind of nice about the smaller, if you can just break it into a smaller piece, is I can literally put it on its side. I'll see if I can do that so you can see See, I can kind of cover a lot of space really quickly. And I go in with my finger and I blend things around. If I'm unhappy with something, I just kind of blend it out. You can see how kind of quickly I can. So some people find this really satisfying because I can cover a lot of space very quickly rather than you know, kind of shading things, which can take a little bit of time, right? So what, I got a minute and a half. Oh my goodness, Michael. Okay, so let's speed things up. I was just being all, I'm so, uh, <laughs> devoted to that, uh, the, the rocket ship that I forgot that the time is clicking away here. Okay. A minute left. Okay. As you can see, look how quickly I can just fill this whole background in nice and quickly. Okay, I'm just going to smudge things out a little bit. And you know, if you make a little bit of a mess, no problem, because you can always wash your hands. Right. Twenty six seconds left on the clock here. So I'm just even gonna blend a little bit in here. Eight seconds. I wonder how you guys are doing at home there. Quickly. 
I know I, I know I said five minutes and we were gonna move on, no question, but let's just this is the final page in my sketchbook. I've gotta make it look something reasonable. <laughs> um Okay. So, you know, I, obviously, I, 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 there was just. Let me see. I'll go back to. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to fit on in this drawing, right? I missed. There was some clouds around the sides. There was way a lot more detail in here. Although the original, right, is missing. You know, it's fairly pixelated and we, there's not a lot of detail in here in fact you would the the way that i've drawn the um craters is much darker than the original but again the point is is not to do the, the best job of of describing this entire image it's about working quickly right trying to get as much here on the page as possible so I'm just going to let's. I'm going to write down the name of this film. Le Voyage dans la Lune. Okay. So the other quick little thing that I just want to show you, I, I mentioned if we're going to use charcoal like this and I close my sketchbook up, in fact, let's, I'm just going to do this just, just for, um, for you to see. If I close my sketchbook up like this and let's say I'm walking around and I'm it's sitting in my backpack, right? I open my sketchbook up. See how it's transferred this image onto the other side, All right? And it can kind of smudge away. But, you know, that's just happened in what? That was three seconds. If you imagine that would be in your sketchbook for weeks, months, years, right? It's, it's not only going to transfer an image onto this blank page, but you're also going to get these lines are then going to start smudging back onto this page. And you could open up your sketchbook a few months later and this beautiful drawing you were super excited about that you were going to photograph and put in your portfolio is now you know not nearly what you wanted it to be and then you get a, a, a um, uh, you get a eraser and you try to clean it up and then it makes things worse because let's actually I'll just show you sometimes this works let's see if I use well This works okay on those outside edges, although look at that. I just, I'm trying to clean this up. Now I made another mark here, right? That kind of thing is like not uncommon where you're trying to clean it up and then you somehow start to make things worse, right? And it sometimes brings more attention. See, now I've got this line on the outside that, right? And look, now I smudge it again. So, Using an eraser can, like, let's say, um, if I go back to this image just really quickly, let's say I want to kind of add a little bit of a highlight. It can do a little bit on there to kind of, let's say, it works a little bit. But you see, isn't that weird? Like, anyway. Um, to, to save this image, I want to use some fixative. Now, I'm just going to spray a little bit of this because I'm inside the house and I don't want to make everybody um, sick. <coughs> or not sick, but just these smells can be kind of strong. So I've, I've got this can and I've, this can is probably 10 years old. So we'll see if there's actually, who knows what's going to come out of it. Um... So I, again, you'd want to do this outside where you got nice, good ventilation. And I'm going to spray this. Whew. So not too much 
smell here. I'm sure my, my wife is going to come down here in two minutes and say, what are you doing? Uh, but the point of, of a workable fixative is that... Yeah, we're gonna put that, um, and again, there was different brands. Here's another one. Is that it's going? It's sort of like glue, a spray glue that that glues onto the surface and helps kind of keep all of the pigment from moving around. And you can get non-workable fixative. Like this is essentially a non-workable, you, which you can. The idea is this is sort of your final, final quote, the crystal clear versus a workable fixative. I could then go back in and add some more charcoal over top of it because maybe you want to build up lots of layers and not have to worry so much about the first layer getting ruined, right? So anyway, that's using some charcoal. So, um, and the end of this sketchbook. Oh my goodness, so I've got, look at that three sketchbooks in these classes so far. So I need need another sketchbook. Okay. Brand new sketchbook. Okay. Uh, let's say. So let's continue on here. And um, I'm gonna do say to get started here. I'm gonna do two big boxes, because I did one big drawing. I'm gonna do a few smaller ones. Okay. And then let's, uh, where's that view? So now I'm gonna just flip through this film again. Let's see it, so I'm trying to remember. You can see there's how the rocket crashes onto the moon and everyone just jumps out and starts running around. Isn't it fantastic? Wow. And look how the moon has got these like <laughs> trees and weird shapes all over it. Um, and then, you know, it's been ages since So let's, I'm just gonna go back here. Okay, here we got this whole. Hmm, I was trying to get him, this funny guy. There we go, okay. Again, very distorted image. And where's my sketchbook? So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a slightly different technique for drawing. Um, instead of trying to draw exactly uh, kind of the, in the ways that we've learned so far this way, I'm going to I'm going to draw things uh, with a scribble technique, and I'm well. Let's say I'm going to start out. If this this would be for those of you that that might find this a little bit too far of a step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try drawing the majority of it in, and let's say I'm going to, I'm going to go back to since I'm demonstrating something new. Five minutes here. So let's say I draw this kind of bullet shape in here, All right? And there's got a, a door that opens. And with this guy, you know, I'm going to, you can do whatever you want with your drawing. I'm going to move him over here. And um, just because there wasn't enough room there. And then here's these kind of Van Gogh starry night kind of things, clouds up here. All right? Okay. So even that 
that's a, a beginning of a drawing, right? Now, I'm going to use the scribble technique to finish this image. Let's zoom in here. Okay. So here, let's say the scribbling. With this one, I'm going to try not to allow myself to make any straight lines. I'm just gonna scribble it out. Okay, we got the sky is gonna be scribbles. The sky needs lots of scribbles here. Got three minutes of scribbling here. Some of some people love the scribbles, doing scribbles, and some people, this is like a horror show. They're just like, oh my goodness, this is just too messy, too confusing, right? So I don't know. There's there's no no one is is better than the other. It's, but I think it's helpful to try out these different kind of techniques and so that you can see I'm just sort of because it's a little bit it, it is messy I need to some you know give myself a little bit of kind of sometimes little like here's this person's body I'm leaving a little halo around there so that I can see um, I can still distinguish that person from there. I've got two minutes left, right? So two minutes to continue scribbling. So if I had like 30 seconds, this finished drawing would look really like, you know, it would look like an out of focus photograph or something, right? It would look very hard to, but with this extra time that I have, and actually I'm just gonna switch to a different pencil here. I can start kind of getting maybe a little bit more specific. So I'm trying to get this, the door of that rocket to... I'm not going to be able to get too much detail into these trees, but or whatever <laughs> they imagined the surface of the moon looking like. And you know, his outfit was white, but you know, in my drawing here, he's becoming like a black silhouette. And maybe I'm going to make sure he's got his hat on. Oh, so I'm a little bit off this screen there as I'm getting so carried away with the scribbling. Got 11 seconds left on the clock. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, um, while that's, I got to replace a camera, but that's so bizarre that that died so quickly. Okay. I think this might have been the battery that, oh. What's going on here? Ew, okay. My apology. Oh, hmm, her. Okay. I wonder if I can get this to run all connected to...
Let's see, is it coming back online? Oh, interesting, okay. I must have forgotten to charge. Okay, so. Oh, got a big cable floating in the air. Um, okay. So this is why I have a backup camera. <laughs> okay. So on the backup camera, a little bit uh, closer, tighter in view. So let's find another image here. I'm trying to remember, these were some kind of mermaid nymphs or something that were on the moon. Oh yeah, here's, this is very unclear as to, it's hard for you to see what's going on there, but um, this is now the surface of the moon. And so let's see, this one's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I think what we can do here is instead this one, I'm only gonna use um, very angular lines, okay? Oops, let me get this, there we go. And let's try five minutes here. So, this one, and maybe I'll just use my, my orange here just again I I would say you could you should just kind of go right in but you know some people might find this a little bit difficult to do without kind of getting the composition sorted out originally now you've probably a lot of you're like well this image is like totally distorted it's super pixel it's super pixelated for me too right so which is you know, maybe really frustrating for a lot of you. But the point is, is, is we only have, we got four minutes, 15 seconds left. We're not going to be able to get a lot of this detail in. We're just trying to, we're really practicing the act of drawing is what we're, we're doing. All right. So everything in this image is going to be straight lines. So the, the reason why this is some people like in juxtaposition, these two drawings couldn't be more different, right? Top to bottom. Um, but the, the point is, is learning different kinds of strategies, right? That we can then deploy whenever we need them. And some people may have thought like, well, this, the scribble technique, uh, really, I've actually found that really freeing and I, I found it really enjoyable. But doing these straight lines just feels too um, restrictive, right? Well, that's a good thing to learn. Well, maybe you should explore more of that, do, do even more scribbling and see what, how that turns out. There's a long history of artists who really, well, long being a hundred years of of uh, artists who really got into scribbling and um, uh, Cy Twombly being probably the, the most well known. You know, some of the stuff I'm now doing down here is I'm kind of making a little bit of stuff up, right? Because there's the 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 timeline of the 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 uh, video there kind of blocking things out All right so I have to be creative So even as I go 
as I'm coloring things in, I'm still trying. I can go lighter. I don't. They don't have to be dark, heavy lines like I was doing earlier. But I'm still trying to go all in in one direction or another. Forty four seconds. Five seconds. I'm just gonna making a few things darker in the foreground. And there we go. Time is up. Put your pencils down, right? Okay. Let's back this back out again for the next one. Okay. So uh, I'm also, let's just write down on the bottom here, this is, well, I'm going to write it down because this is a new sketchbook. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Le Voyage dans la lune, 1902. Okay, so... Bring this over here. So the next uh, thing that I want to to move on to. So, so why have we been doing this? Why have we been looking at um, these images? Let me see. I'm gonna pull up. Uh, okay. Let's keep disappearing. So, okay, so why why have we been doing these drawings so far? We're, we're talking about drawing quickly, and you know, the more we do this kind of stuff, the more confidence we're going to get. The more, the, and because if you're drawing quickly and you got a little bit of a timer, it's going to force you to omit certain details. You just know from the beginning, there's just no way. I'm possibly going to capture everything that was on the television or computer or phone screen in five minutes. It's just, there's just no way. So it, there's something very liberating about that. You're just like, okay, I'm just going to do whatever I can and then move on and we're going to try it again. So it's a great warm up technique. Um, but it's also going to lead us into what we're going to talk about doing next, which is drawing figures quickly and figures that may be moving. So when I'm teaching uh, drawing classes at the university level, we often have a model, um, nude or clothed or draped as they might say, come into the classroom and pose for us. And it's sort of like a cliche of art school is drawing nude models, right? And you know, in this day and age, why would people do that? What, what's the, why it just seems somehow antiquated or perverse, you know, why to, to get somebody to stand in front of the class and take their clothes off, right? Um, and so what is the purpose of that? The, the, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons, but just for our sake right now, when we're talking about gesture drawing, is a model is a human being. And a human being isn't a robot. A human being is going to move, you know, try, let's say you're trying to hold a pose, right? Uh, and I'm, you can't see, let's say I'm standing on one leg, right? Like there's only 
so long that I can do this without like, oh, I got to itch my side of my face or my leg is sore. So I'm going to shake it out a little bit. Right. So I have to, as a drawer, work quickly enough to capture everything that needs to be done on the page before the model moves and um, at whether the timer expires or the model needs to take a drink of water or a drink of tea. Okay, so let's, um, we're going to get another page in our sketchbook prepared. And then I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to show you where I, I found these next few images here. Um, and so, so this website is called, uh, P Pixels or Pixels. I don't know how you would uh, pronounce this. <laughs> um, you can see that fully on the screen there. Okay. And one of the cool things is sort of like this unsplash that I've shown you before. Oh, this is the, the, the photographer who took the, the image that I used in the thumbnail. Um, but this one is for stock video. So you can, uh, let's say, Let's, well, I have a few already queued up, but let me see. Um, uh, what would be, let's say, well, walking, let's say. So here's a whole bunch of videos free to use for any purpose whatsoever. Um, of people walking. So. Let's say this, these people walking by the camera here. All right. So you could go on here and you could very quickly find images of people moving. Why would, so why do we want images of people moving? What benefit could that provide us? Why would we want to do this? Well, because we're going to practice our gesture drawing while we watch some of these videos. So let's, um, here's one that I've already pulled off of this website. It's this, let's see if this, how much room we need for this. I can't quite remember if it'll hopefully will fit in here. And, oh, God. Ugh. I, I didn't show you any of that. Okay, so let me just go, I'm gonna go back. So, I, was, I wasn't on, I had the wrong thing on the screen. So, let's just, let's, let's try something different so I can actually show you. So, this website, Pexels here, unlike uh, the Unsplash, and this is the photographer who, who did the, took the photograph that the, I used in the thumbnail. Um, this one is for, for free stock photography images that you can use for any reason. This one is for free um, videos. So let's say uh, standing. Let's so maybe walking might be a little bit intense for people. Okay, here's a baseball player. So I'm going to, let's download this. So here's the Tima Miro Shnichenko. I should, as a, uh, as a Ukrainian, I should be able to pronounce names like that, um, with more confidence. Okay. So I'm going to. Oops, I don't want that. Ah, my goodness. Where's my... So I've disrupted the music there for a second. My apologies. Okay, so let's open this in quick time. And then I am going to loop this. We'll see how well this works.
Okay, and I'm gonna get new image here. Or actually. Okay. So, let's we're going to we're going to do this image. We're going to draw this image here. And, oh, that's being funny. Is it? I don't think there's any audio here. How on earth are we going to draw a picture of someone who is moving like this? It's going to repeat. Okay, good. So, I am going to draw, let's see, I'm not skipping a page here. I'm going to take a full page in my sketchbook, make this nice and big rectangle. Okay. So, this is actually, this is a perfect video for us to use for this purpose because uh, there's not a lot of movement. Um, so let's say this is kind of where his feet are. You know, it's camera's moving up and down a little bit, but I'm just going to put his feet here. And the camera also goes up and down where the top of his head is, is also kind of, uh, it's changes a bunch of times. So I'm just going to put it up here. All right. And let's just, we're going to quickly draw in the a body. So if you're, this is kind of a little bit of a review for anybody who recalls um, the structure of the, the human torso. So here's, this here is right in the middle of the body. So that's going to be the uh, crotch area here. So we're gonna do an eight head tall figure. All right, so this is gonna be where his, now the, of course there's lots of different ways to do this but we're just going to kind of do a quick review. Wasn't expecting we would do this, but this is cool. So here's the, I talked about the pillow last week, right? So here's this pillow, right? Here's your belly buttons somewhere around just underneath there. Here's the knees. Now, if I, again, if I was doing a gesture, we're, we're gonna do a gesture drawing here in a second. I just figure maybe for our purpose, we're just gonna kind of practice a, a little bit quick review here um, of the structure of the body, right? So here's where this belt is gonna be right here. His legs right here. Shoulders. He's actually got pretty wide shoulders, so I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to make the bat kind of up here. I could make, he's, he's he, right now he's got the bat over the shoulder, but I'm just going to put it there. Okay. So I've got the basics in place. Now I'm going to just start kind of sketching what I see in here. Again, he's moving and I'm going to set a five minute timer here. So because he's moving, this is also going to force me just to, to let go a little bit. Right. I mean, I could pause it at a part of the video where um, he is standing like this. And I, I to be honest, I, I'm trying to <laughs> now that I'm like, does he actually assume this position at any point in the video? It's kind of I think he's approaching it somewhere here. Right. If not, that's OK. I actually don't think he's ever in this position. Um, Okay. 
Okay. So here's kind of the basic. See, if I want to do a more structured drawing, this is what I would, would have done, or, or am doing, I guess. All right. And so now I'm just sort of looking for like the shadow on his face. Very loose drawing, right? I'm, I'm, in fact, I, ideally this drawing, would, I would have gone way faster than this. And maybe, I think we'll do a different, we'll do, I'll do a different drawing just so I can shake things up a bit. You'd see here's, we talked about last week when we were drawing um, fabric, right, where the, some of the tension is. So I can quickly, those things in. I'm not even going to worry about the logo on his shirt. Maybe I'll just quickly color, darken this. So you can imagine if I was actually trying to draw a baseball player, you know, standing at the plate about to, to swing and start playing a game, like he would be long gone. He or she, right? Um, I wouldn't have the opportunity to do this much detail unless, you know, maybe they're, you know, batting practice, or I don't know, or what, what possible situation, but, or he was posing for me. But again, even if he was posing for me, the likelihood that he would stand perfectly still, especially if it's not a professional model, is very low, right? He might be talking with a friend, oh, he gets a text message, takes his phone out, starts chatting or texting away. You know, somebody brings him some something to drink or a snack or, you know, coach starts coming and talking and he turns away, right? So I wouldn't have a lot of time to actually do this image. So the other thing too, what I would, if I was doing this I would draw this figure as quickly as possible, and then I would worry about the, the stuff in behind, right? Because the stuff in behind, I can do long after he's gone, right? In fact, I could find a totally different background to, put, um, to, to, to draw for him, right? I don't even need this one. Um, Some of you probably didn't think I was going to draw the, the background at all, eh? Okay, and I, obviously I could continue. Well, let's let's say I'm going to put a few clouds in the sky here. Let's. Actually, maybe I will go a little bit more into here. Okay, so that was my five minutes. And I'm just going to quickly, this is some sand or whatever the, the stuff is made of on the baseball field, so I'm just going to quickly add a few dots, like, you know, to suggest that it's a different texture. Okay. So, I like that. That was, that was good. We, this one, um, so I like that. Okay, let's see if we can, a lot of this same guy standing. Let's see, what's this guy up to here? Dancing man. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe. What's this woman doing here? 
Oh, this is going to be perfect. Okay. So I'm going to down. Load this. And. I'm just going to like it. Ah, I keep doing that. Sorry. Here, the sound stopped momentarily. So let's bring this into a different program quick time. Okay. So let's go to another page here. sure this loops so let's try this again here so I'm gonna I like drawing a little border around here rather than going right to the edge that's a personal preference um, you could use a ruler if you want it to look a little bit cleaner okay so Let's say we're going to do another five minute drawing here. Again, if this was, you know, a little bit more of a, you know, uh, my art school situation, we'd be going much. So actually, I, let's say I, I am going to try to draw this much faster. I've shown you different ways of doing it. So this is how I would do it. I'm going to really quickly sketch things in here maybe I don't I guess I f I'm not drawing too maybe there's some other people that I need to draw this a little bit darker for right and then we got people tell me I'm not drawing dark enough um, Okay, so I mean, there's a couple clouds in the sky. That would be this would that's a more traditional kind of gesture drawing, right? Trying to get the whole thing in what that took me maybe 30 seconds or so. That would be where we want to to get to. But now let's say like we've been doing. I got another three and a half minutes on the clock. Um, I'm going to start coming in here and I'm going to try to draw, add a little bit more to this gesture drawing and kind of fill it out. So you can see I kind of I'm using a little bit of kind of these straight lines like we did a little bit earlier. Right, and I'm looking, you know, at the video right now, I want to see that dress really pop up again so I can get a nice kind of movement. So if, if this was somebody, I was, if I was standing in there in real life watching this, so I'm, see I'm moving that leg here. I'd want, uh, I'd, I'd look for that. I'd be like, okay, let's get see that dress kind of billowing out because that was kind of cool okay oh, this is her purse here right um okay pretty happy with that up here i'm just gonna try drawing a little bit of this landscape And as I do some of these hills, I'm trying to kind of think about using my pencil lines to kind of convey the, the direction of, of the landscape. Got a minute and a half left, Michael. Okay. So I'm not going to be able to get a lot of that done.
All right, and then we talked about some of these patterns last week. So I'm just gonna, I'm really using my imagination here to do this. Forty seconds left. Twenty seconds left. Five seconds. Okay. So that was oh, timer still going off here. Okay. So is all the detail there? Of course not. Is the proportions perfect? Of course not. Is the shadow missing? Of course, yes, there, it's not, it's there. <laughs> um, but the, the point is, is I want to be able to describe this scene as quickly as possible. So this is really handy, you know, I, I've, I'm making, working on a comic book, and I did a lot of the pages quickly like this. I'd literally set a timer for myself. Let me see. I'm going to go back to this view here. So, you know, working on, on my comic, I did a lot of the pages and panels exactly like this so that I could quickly sort out my ideas. And I literally, can you not, set the timer exactly like what we've done here and said, okay, five minutes to draw the whole page, to figure it out, get it on there, whether it's good or not, I don't know, but at least once it's there, I can look at it and say, well, you know, instead of this woman looking with her looking outward with her back facing it, I think I want her facing the other way onto a drawing like that, right? So until I have it on the page, I don't really know what I want or what's going to look good. So the draw, the act of drawing is my mind processing and thinking, right? Same sort of thing like typing something out and then editing it and uh, maybe I should move this here. Maybe there's a better word for that. It's the same thing with drawing, right? In gesture drawing, we want to get the idea on the page as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's find, we have time for maybe one or two more here. So, um, follow this filmmaker, that was good. Let's maybe one more here. Oh, what is this? Is this a swimmer gonna jump in the water? Is he going to stand there? Hope he stands there. Awesome. Okay. So here's another guy from behind this time. I'm a male figure. And... Let's bring it to quick time. I'm going to loop this. Okay, so I'm going to go to a new page in my sketchbook. Okay, and again, here's the five minute timer starting right now. Let's see how much I can get done. Draw my box 
again, and this box isn't even the correct ratio for the image I see on the right, right? Um, and you know what, this time I'm gonna use a little bit kind of more of a the kind of scribble technique. You saw me kind of use it for the last episode. And you know what, actually I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use charcoal, uh, the willow charcoal stick for this. Just cause it shows up a little bit darker. Background of the pool, a little bit of perspective. Right, so, you know, that's a minute and a bit, right? Uh, so, that this could be a gesture drawing just like this. That, that would be a totally acceptable kind of gesture drawing. But we, I've got another three and a half minutes on here, so I'm just going to keep on going. I'm using, holding it on the side here like this to get a little bit more of his body. Now, some people are really great at doing like very anatomically precise gesture drawings. Okay, hmm. Got another camera battery just conking out. So, let's pause this for a second. Technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Start the timer with two minutes and 10 seconds left there. So some people can do like fantastic, you know, totally proportional um, human bodies in a very short period of time. That takes a lot of practice in order to be able to do that. And, you know, if your goal is to draw like highly accurate, quote unquote accurate figures, then that would be a great use of your time to try to, you would do this sort of thing over and over and over again until you've kind of so-called got it, right? Um, personally, I've never been too concerned with that kind of thing, so it's not really a skill that I've tried to master. Like, sort of what I'm drawing right now, this is, I actually really like the way this kind of stuff looks. I'm, I know there's, there's probably some of you watching right now who are like, yeah, I actually really like this kind of what how that looks and there's probably some of you who are like oh my goodness I can't believe this guy's teaching me how to draw like <laughs> um, I got 50 seconds left on the clock um, you know it's just what is your your goal when you're when it comes to drawing like what do you want to be able to do I do think that no matter um, if, if it involves drawing, mastering gesture drawing in the way that you define it is critically important. 
I think it's critically important for you to be able to um, to express yourself as quickly as possible and, and to at least get the drawing started you know in a in a real timely um, fashion All right do these two drawings look exactly the same of course not of course not okay I'm going to spray a little bit more fixative on here Again, I, I should be doing this outside with lots of ventilation. But uh, I don't have that opportunity here since we're doing it live on the air. Woo! That is unpleasant stuff. So if you got... Um, what can I do? To, I'm just trying to prop this up so that it can dry without sticking to the page in behind. Okay, so let's find one more image. I, again, I would generally be trying to find... Um, I, have, I have some other images I was going to use. I had some guys doing Tai Chi and stuff. There's another guy staying from behind it. Let's. What would be something that seems very appropriate for our contemporary world? Oh, taking it all off. Hmm. Actually, let's. Uh, I kind of. This is strange enough that I kind of like it. Okay. Look at here. Cotton bro. Awesome. Okay, so we'll do, oh, you can't, ah, I forgot, you can't see what I'm just doing, okay. And you can't see this, let me, oh. you know, it's, it's towards that time of the, <laughs> of the episode where I am start to lose my mind. Okay, so I was looking for looking for more images this one here this guy he's going to take his outfit off so i'm going to pull it up here we're going to loop it and then okay so let's set a timer for five minutes So, you have the choice here to, to draw this figure at whatever stage of clothing you want them to be in. I kind of like the fully clothed figure here, right? But let's say I'm starting the drawing right now. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a body. And this time I'm not going to really worry about proportion, right? And... I'm going to try to capture some of this as quickly as possible there. This kind of big outfit. Looks like it's got some kind of zipper down the middle, right? Baggy clothes. And shoes. Okay, and then uh, do I need to? Oh, this one's kind of sharp. Okay, so I'm gonna wait until he starts up again. So this is a, a common thing. Let's, I, if you 
take a moment to look at, at my website, you'll see that I've done a lot of artwork while traveling and moving and of people moving and traveling and dancing and all that kind of stuff. And when you're working quickly like that, you, let's say, uh, so for, let's say I was drawing a cyclist or something, right? So what I would do, or let's say I'm drawing, uh, you know, at, at on a waterfront somewhere. So I'm going to come down here where it's, I can draw his pants until So what I would do is let's say I want to I'm I'm sitting on a on a bench by um uh on, like on a coffee shop overlooking kind of the waterfront and there's cyclists driving riding by and I want to do a picture of you know a cyclist or something what I would do is maybe start the drawing with one cyclist and then as you know if they if they move out of the way or you know maybe they're just paused then I would start looking at other cyclists racing by to kind of capture to kind of fill in the details so that you know I'm, I'm using a combination of a whole bunch of different people to to create one composite version of a person so that I'm not just like oh the person moved I guess I'm screwed I can't continue drawing I'm out of luck All right I can just keep on going by um, taking pieces of different people and like Frankensteining them together into one figure. Okay, so now I'm going to go back up to this head here. It's kind of darker under here. Get those eyes in. Little bit of his shoes. I've got 45 seconds left. Right, and I can think about areas where there's going to be lots of pinching right underneath these arms in this crotch area here. Right, and I can make sure I can emphasize those things. Like this drawing, there's there's no point where I could pause the video and see this image exactly um, like I've drawn it, right? Let's see, I'm gonna put a bit of a shadow here. Three seconds in. Okay. So, um, class has been going on. I haven't looked at, oh, yes, yeah, so my, my mom said, can't see the images. <laughs> yeah, there's a few times there where I lost track of what I was doing, and so my apologies. But, okay, so we're, I think I'm going to call it a class today. I don't know if anybody sent me images uh, to look at, but I think um, I'll, uh, I, I'm, it's, we're, pushing two hours here so I think that's pretty pretty much good enough for today is where I'm trying to get to um, and I'm sure a lot of people are pretty exhausted so the the purpose of everything we did today doing this gesture drawing is to be able to draw faster develop more confidence I've shown you a number of like websites or that you you know you can use this pexel to, or unsplash just to work on photographs finding videos you can use the same sort of thing drawing real people in real time uh like you're let's say you've got a cat or a dog sitting on the couch you could try drawing fast drawings of them right and if the cat gets up and moves 
you know, that just as a reminder, like, okay, I've got to work faster, or I could start this, you know, this drawing is, let's say, I've only got the head done on the cat, and the cat got up and moved. Well, let's go to another page, and I'll draw the cat sitting on the couch now, and then... Oh, the cat came back to that similar position. I'm going to go back to my drawing and add the body to that, right? So it's just about getting you to draw faster. And the faster you draw, the more confidence you're going to get. And you're going to start surprising yourself. I know there's some people who, who've been following along today that have gone like, oh, every drawing I did um, just didn't turn out. It's just, they're all garbage. Well, first of all, I guarantee you not, they're not all garbage. I guarantee you that a few of them are way better than you think they are. And they're certainly better than you probably thought you would ever be able to do. Um, if, to, in order to help build that confidence, what I would do would be to draw the same drawing a number of times. So let's say even just this last one I did would be to just turn the page and try drawing it again. And then do it again. And I bet you by the second, third, fourth time you did it, you are going to be, be able to do it much better than the first time you did it, right? Um, just because you're you're taking the knowledge that you've gained through all these different iterations and you're applying it to that final drawing. So it's going to be better. Um, and it's just, the, again, that, sh that timer is just going to force you to to move quickly, to, to, you can't use your eraser really at all for gesture drawing. You I mean, you, I mean, let's say you have some materials that you can erase, that's fine. But when you're doing a gesture drawing, you're generally moving so quickly that getting your eraser out and fine tuning is not possible. You just have to keep on drawing and kind of maybe enlarge things, move things in order to make it work, right? Like you've seen some of the other images. Right, like when I moved her leg over a little bit, right? Like, I mean, rather than getting my eraser out and being like, okay, I think I've got to move this here, right? It's just like, who cares? Move it, boom, done, right? So, you know, it's, it's speaking of like top chef, right? Um, it's, it's like that. It's like, okay, I spilled the rice on the floor. Okay, we're not using rice in this dish. We are using bread. I've got bread right here. Let's now this is going to be a totally different dish. And I've got uh, like, how am I going to make the bread work? Because I obviously can't use the rice that's on the floor. So you're, it's about putting yourself in that position. And it's hard to do when it's just you by yourself and you don't have somebody like me giving you like those prompts. That's why setting a little timer on your phone is really helpful because the, when the timer goes off, you can add a little bit extra time to yourself, but I would encourage you to be like, like, okay, wrap it up. The last few lines, let's start another drawing and move forward. Okay, so, um, uh, Heidi says she didn't see, send any images this week. So that's great. Um, so, Thank you everybody for watching another one of these episodes. Um, next class, we are going to be learning how to draw. We're going to talk about drawing likenesses of people because we've drawn some faces before, but maybe they haven't been totally accurate or they haven't looked like the person we're trying to draw. Like when we were drawing the queen or when I was drawing my daughter, Right? And they didn't quite turn out like, why is that? Why did they not turn out the way we wanted? Because we're going to try to go for some likenesses and I'll teach you some techniques of how to get closer to the real thing. Um, but also kind of showing you how to draw just like this, you know, some faster drawings of strangers. So let's say you're sitting on a park bench and you want to try to draw somebody, you know, on another park bench reading and you want to make it a, a kind of a nice drawing rather than just a quick little sketch like this. How would we go about that? So that's what the next episode's like. And I've got a little surprise for the final one. So enjoy the long weekend, Labor Day on uh, Monday, uh, depending on where you are on, on who knows what holiday you might be celebrating and what, because there's so many different people from different countries watching these days. So um, yeah, I guess that's enough for me and um, we'll see you next week. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon, everybody. Take care.